What's happening, everybody? This is the Philly Experience Podcast, your home for all things Philly sports. Alongside Tanner Martin and Tiger Hood, I'm your host, Max James. Chris Stacker is not joining us today. He's on vacation, but he'll be back next week in studio for next week's show. As always, it's great to be with you as we are now about a week away from the MLB trade deadline. We continue to wait and see if or when the Phillies front office will make a move to acquire more talent for this playoff push down the stretch. Guys, Phillies training camp starts this week. We're looking for, I mean, lots of competition. Obviously, defensive ends probably one of our weaker spots. Um, Jordan Howard, the running back committee there with Miles Sanders. Um, basically, these guys not competing because we know we, we got a committee going on here, right. but a lot of uh, just a lot of excitement surrounding this team. Right. We'll also touch on some fantasy, a little, a couple of duos in the NBA. You know who's going to be able to make a push this season when the uh, NBA season comes upon us in a couple months. And from the fantasy standpoint, you know what? When you're looking at your draft, for me personally, a tw- I'm in a 12 teamer PPR, mm-hmm. and for me, obviously, it's always running back heavy. Wide receiver heavy, of course. Mm-hmm. But but we'll, t- we'll talk on when to draft a quarterback. Some quarterbacks you like. Um, how your strategy goes, because I know some people like doing two running backs for the right. first two rounds. Some do like doing one running back, one wide receiver. Right. But let's touch on some Eagles Eagles training camp real quick. Obviously, give me a awesome. green right it, slot. Of, spider two <laughs> wide banana. Yeah. Lots of excitement around this team. So what are you guys looking forward to most as training camp starts? Man, I'm just looking forward to the aspect of hearing the hitting and. You know, seeing the violence again overall, man. I, I love the game of football, as I've said before. Um, man, I'm, I'm excited. You know, and the one thing I think that people are kind of overlooking and people are kind of, you know, poo-pooing and tossing off to the side is the fact that Deshaun Jackson is returning to the Philadelphia Eagles as our deep threat. And the one thing that people... You know what? And I was one of those people in the beginning when Deshaun Jackson was here. I was one of those people that was like, oh, he's just a one-trick pony. You know, he can only do one thing good. You know, he ain't, he ain't really got those kind of hands. He can't catch in traffic. He can't do this, that, third, another. That may not be his game, but his one game of speed is what made the difference on offense. And, you know, that speed is the one thing that we missed when, uh, sadly, the worst coach that I have personally ever seen, Chip Kelly, just all of a sudden just got rid of him for was no that reason. Like a wise-ass comment? Yes, it was, Chip. That was the direct message straight at you. I don't care. Anyway, so, and we never really were able to replace that speed. And we kept plugging in players, and we kept trying to try different players to replace that speed. At one point in time, you know, after Deshaun Jackson, it was Jeremy Macklin. And then after him, you know, we tried it out with Doriel Green Beckham and, you know, and a Nelson Aguilar with no hands. And then the year that we won the Super Bowl, it was Torrey Smith. You know, um, last year we tried it out with Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace got hurt. We never really were, was able to get that speed. And as a result, you know, the, the receivers, you know, they struggled to get open. And the only person that could get open was Zach Gertz. So, you know, with now that deep threat back in an offense – I think this team, especially on offense, is really going to take off. Well, what I can't look for, well, what I can look forward to, and I, I'm excited to see, is Carson Wentz in that red jersey, moving around in the pocket, throwing the ball around. I just want to see how he's doing after his injury, and uh, what he has in store for us, because he's he's been underrated. This up, he's underrated right now. Yes. The Eagles are the Eagles are getting a lot of praise, but Carson Wentz himself underrated right now. Oh yeah, because I think they I think that they do the NFL hundred top hundred players thing, and I think he was what ninety five, something like that. Ninety five or ninety six. Yeah. yeah, and he was like number three last year. Yeah, last year, year number three, now ninety six. Yep. That's a heck of a drop off, but you know I'm, I'm confident Carson Wentz is going to bounce back because now he finally he's not he doesn't have to focus on recovering from an injury. He can sh- focus strictly on football. You know, right. connecting with his receivers, learning the learning more of the playbook. And the one thing I'm expecting him to do is, you know, I'm I'm hoping that he realizes that he doesn't have to take on the entire offense. He does not have to do everything himself. Sometimes he just needs to throw the football away. You know, sometimes he just needs to defer to the running backs. Sometimes he just needs the audible. It's not all about you. And also, look who's behind you. Like, there, there's no more Nick right. Foles. Yeah. There's no security blanket. So we really need you to kind of kind of protect yourself a little bit, you know? Right. He yeah. doesn't have the shadow Definitely. of Nick Foles, and he can stay comfortable and know that no one's really there to take his job. Right. 
Right, and and obviously we know we hope we hope he stays healthy. Uh, one thing I want to ask you guys is the, comp- the, the just to compare this team to the 2017 Eagles. You know, I think I don't want to call it a Cinderella that year because we did have a lot of talent on that team. Obviously, Wentz gets hurt and Foles takes over. Mm-hmm. But this year, it's almost everybody around the league knows how good the Eagles are. You know, how much talent we have on this mm-hmm. team, the high expectations. Do you view that as a positive, or you kind of sit there and you're like, man, like let's pump the brakes here. I get the fact that Jordan Howard. You know, we think we know he's a good running back, right? But we've seen him struggle the last couple of years. Miles Sanders, a rookie, you know, we hear around the league on these networks and everything. Oh, man, the Eagles' backfield's great, specifically the backfield. I'm just giving you an example right, right. now. And, you know, there's for some people like us in Philly right now, we have our questions. You know, Jordan Howard, everybody was saying, especially Matt Nagy, the coach of the Bears, mm-hmm. he's got three down potential. Now, with our committee backfield, do you like the fact that maybe where he's spelling time, we got Sproles back now into the fold? Miles Sanders gets when I say spell time, I mean Miles Sanders gets some runs. You know, right. Jordan Howard gets some runs. You know, back and forth. So, do you like that committee group, or do you just do you think maybe Jordan Howard should get the bulk of the work and then have you know, especially because Sanders has had that hamstring injury recently. So, what do you guys think? I, I like the running back by committee so long as you know how to utilize that running back by committee. I think that's the one thing that the Eagles struggled with last year was figuring out which running back to use in which situations. Like, sometimes I would see them use Darren Sproles in a goal line situation. I'm like, eh, unless you're doing a pass play, that makes sense. And then you do a run play. Well, I, I kind of expected that, too, as a as a defensive player. So using Darren Sproles doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So having Jordan Howard, a guy who you can utilize in the red zone, that bigger, stronger bruiser back, you know, that's definitely, that's definitely, you know, that's a good thing to have. And then the young guy in Miles Sanders, um, Darren Sproles is signing back. I'm on record as saying that I thought that we could, you know, move on from him. Obviously, I was talked down from a certain co-host about that. but Multiple times. <laughs> but, you know, he's back, and I'm definitely appreciative of it. Um the question is, you know, how are they going to make room for Darren Sproles? Because I know they're going to make room for Darren Sproles. He's a he's an excellent third down running back. Only a fool would, you know, disagree. So how do they utilize him? Well, I think punt returns and kick returns, obviously, you start there. But I, I was going to ask you, Tanner, do you think he gets any third down work or any, any car- like how many carries do you think he gets per game? Like, is he getting any work? Because, like I said, again, we got Corey Clement. We got Miles Sanders. We got Jordan Howard. Does he get any touches in the backfield? I think his workload will be lighter this season. Uh, considering what happened to him last season where he got injured early, mm-hmm. early on, I think, do they put him as primary punt returner? Because they definitely shouldn't put Deshaun Jackson. No, I think you have to put him as your primary punt returner because yeah. he's shown the ability his whole there's, career. Yeah, there's really no one else. But if you that. put him at primary punt returner, then he can't be on the field on offense right. that much. Like, I know you got, I know um, Doug Peterson likes to spread it out wide, you know, spread them all out in the, spread them all out, out wide, you know, no, no back in the backfield. Sometimes they get a mismatch for Darren Sproles or whatever running back is out there, but, you know, that's kind of his game. So, what do you think about putting like two two RBs in the backfield? Do you like having maybe? I always like that's it. That's an excellent not, not idea. I always like it. Yeah, that's not, an excellent idea. Not um, like a trick play, but more like yeah. you know, just because he's such a great pass catcher out of the backfield. That is an excellent idea. Um, I think that's something that they will utilize more um, this season, and I think that's something that they should really take advantage because as an as a defender, you know, you start thinking to yourself, okay, I see Darren Sproles in the backfield, and I see, let's say, Jordan Howard in the backfield. I'm like, oh, boy, they're right. going to run, they're going to pass. You know, so now I'm on edge. I can't necessarily just, boom, come off the come off the line of scrimmage and just attack. I kind of got to think a little right. bit. And when you get defenses thinking, that's when you can attack them best. Like what they did with Blunt and Ajayi during the Super Bowl right. season. That was just, yeah, it was dangerous. Right. <laughs> yeah, I want I want to ask you guys. Uh, one question about the tight end position now, and we all know how good Zach Ertz is. Um, mm. I, I have him as my second-ranked tight end in the league, right behind Travis Kelsey. But, you know, we know how many targets he got last year, how many receptions he had. Does, do you think with Wentz now having a full season, no Foles to back him up? Because, like I said, again, Foles came in last year. People around around the world, people around the country, any football fan really said, listen, Foles kind of spreads the ball out more. Wentz kind of right. just hit like, the pinpoint Ertz. Do you think the ball gets spread around more this season? I think so, because once again, with the addition of Deshaun Jackson being able to stretch the field, I think that opens up more things. And I think that allows for receivers like Alshon Jeffrey to be one on one, because obviously you got to worry about the speed factor of Deshaun and no longer can defenses stack the box and stop your run. 
and stop once. No longer can they keep that one safety high because if you keep that one safety high, then you're going to leave one of the fastest receivers in the NFL and one of the best 50-50 ball receivers in the NFL one-on-one. Somebody's going to be left one-on-one, and that's not something that you want to take that risk of. It's going to be more um, two high safeties in the backfield preventing that, so that's going to open up more over the middle. That's going to open up more for Nelson Aguilar, um, and that is going to take the pressure off of Ertz. Goddard should be in store for a better season than Agreed. last season, more uh, recoveries. He had 33. He had 334 yards, average 10 yards a carry, four touchdowns. Um so yeah, with I mean it's so it should dangerous be five. with both Ertz and it should be five. It should be five touchdowns a, yep. to be exact. But it, I mean just to it's have Ertz Cowboys. and Goddard, Dallas can block. He's real. Yeah, I mean it's going to be dangerous for the defense. Do you like the so. two? Do you like the two tight end sets down there? You, I mean, I love the two tight end sets. I think sets. I think with two guys that are great pass catchers and and great in general. I mean I know Goddard's getting better with the pass blocking and same thing with Ertz. You know those guys come or, or should say the run blocking, but. Man, having those guys out there, and I think I was, me personally, was a little skeptical when we took Goddard actually in the second round a couple years ago because I didn't really think it was position in need. You know, at mm-hmm. the time, you know, our secondary was kind of weak. You know, but hopefully this year. I know last year he had he had moments where he showed flashes of you know some some really good football, but I think this year he really does take a step forward. And it's all about opportunity in this league. You get the opportunity to play more, and you show, and it all, it all goes back to training camp. Like right. like who's going to stand out, right? Who's going to stand out in training camp and really catch the eyes of, of this other of coaching staff? And yep. back to what you were saying about how we feel about the Eagles being talked a lot, uh, talked about a lot. And I, I don't know. Maybe we should pump the brakes a little bit because I like the underdog role that we were playing the last two seasons, kind of. The yeah, last two seasons. Would, yeah, definitely. I, mean, I, I think the Saints are still there. You got to say the Saints yeah. are still there. The oh, Rams, absolutely. The Rams are good. I'm not yeah. going to say we're going to completely sweep the NFC. That's I mean, you know I just don't see that happening. But. In terms of your comment about the underdog thing, eventually the underdog is going to become the top dog. Yeah. And in this situation, the underdog has become the top dog. So right. now, because you're the top dog, you have to live by that title. Yeah. You are no longer looked at as the little brother of the NFL anymore. That's right. The, the celebrated little brother who always gets congratulations but never exactly accomplishes anything. Mm-hmm. Right. Now you've actually, you have a Super Bowl ring. You've joined the teams that have Super Bowls. Uh-huh. You are no longer... Uh, you are no longer an underdog. You're considered a contender yes, now. Yes, automatically. Every year this is going to happen. So the Eagles need to embrace that. No more of using the underdog thing as a as a mentality. That mentality should be gone now. Now you need to um, focus your attention on trying to get better and trying to maintain that top dog status. Well, well listen, one thing I want to get your opinions on, the, the, we know how good the offensive line is. I know Peters is there still, and you know we got um, a, a good offensive line like, you know, one through five, all up front, you know? So I wanted to ask you on the flip side of that, the defensive line. I know we got, we're good up the middle with the, with the tackles, but mm. do you have any concern there or how, how much concern do you have with the, with the lack of the depth at the DN position? That, it concerns me because of the way we rotate our defensive line. Um, because on the first line, we have Derek Barnett and we have Brandon Graham. Then on the second line, we have Vinnie Curry and Joe Osman or Josh Sweat or, you know, in those two guys, I haven't seen anything of that much. And Sharif Vinny, Miller, too. A little, and Sharif Miller. Him. And that's another thing, too. You're you're forcing, you know, this fourth-round prospect. Now, albeit, I think the kid is talented and I think the kid has a future, but you're forcing him to mature early and contribute early because of your lack of depth at defensive end. Now, to get into other NFL news relating to the Eagles, um, Mike Daniels, a uh, defensive end for the Is he an for end the or Packers. A um, he's a defensive end in their three four front. Um, he got released. He's he got released by Green Bay um, sometime this week. And there's rumors have it that he would like to one of the teams that. Is are interested in bringing him in is the Philadelphia Eagles. Obviously, he grew up here in New Jersey and things like that. And that wouldn't be a bad fit. But I just feel like then you're taking you're going to take somebody who's in a three four front and you're putting him into a four three front. And there are two different defensive ends. Yeah, I mean, listen, the Packers got rid of this guy for a reason. First of all, he's 30 years old, so he's kind of older. I know Brandon Graham's 30 as well, but he's kind of older for a defensive end. He, he's going to command a lot of money. Right, and he's coming off injury. I know he's a, he had a Pro Bowl season a couple years ago, but he was injured a little bit last year. So there's, there's a lot of question marks around him. We know he's talented when he's on the field and playing. 
I mean, if if the contract again, like kind of how I said with Sproles, right? Mm-hmm. The contract was right. We signed him to the minimum, and we got him back. So if the contract's right, I think you got to look for it based on the fact that man, you're one injury away from that at that defensive end position, like True. Barnett or somebody, from being in some serious trouble there. So True, and but I feel as though because you have so many young guys that need to really learn what it means to be a defensive end, and your one veteran is Brandon Graham at that defensive end position, it would kind of be good to bring in another veteran. I mean, we've had discussions about this you know, about keeping players because they are veterans. For example, me and you still go at odds about Jason Peters. I I like Andre Dillard. I do. I think he's going to be an excellent left tackle, future left tackle. But it's nothing like getting their hands-on experience from a guy who's done it for umpteen years, who's been a pro bowler, who's been very successful at it. It's nothing like getting that knowledge. Now, now from the flip side of that, here's here's the thing where you, this comes in the money situation, right? We, Mike Daniels, right? He was going to want some money. If we didn't sign Peters thirteen million, then we got thirteen million freed up. Go out and get I Mike think, Daniels. I think we have twenty four million dollars left in cap. So, do you think can, that's enough to get this guy on this team? Yeah, sign him for like maybe seven eight mil for one year, or maybe an option for two years, a team option for two years, or a player option for two years. And then you have a solid guy in your in in your on your uh, defensive line rotation. That would be great, only because listen, like Derek Barnett, we know how great he is. He was drafted in the first round, and and Brandon Graham resigned, which I wasn't a huge fan of. Me neither. But I mean, nothing nothing we can do about it. He's done a lot for us, and he's back now. So um, after that, there's just I get Vinny Curry. I get it. You know, he 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 won the Super Bowl in 2017 in our scheme. Mm. He's coming back, but there's no. You know, confidence. There's no real confidence level. And listen, we we won that Super Bowl. A big part of it was getting to that quarterback. Yes. The rotations, keeping guys, you know, healthy, keeping them, you know, fresh, getting guys in yep. rotation, like you said, like you mentioned earlier. And taking pressure off of that, um, those defensive backs, which. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, our talented defensive line, like Fletcher Cox would get there by himself. Like, yeah. Just yeah, moving right. the center out of the way. So I think uh, it's, it's a position that has kind of been there as far as the need for it, the defensive end for the last maybe month or two. We haven't really addressed it. So I guess Howie either he wants to play it smart with the cap or, you know, he really thinks these guys are gonna, you know, improve quickly when and, the season comes. And speaking of defensive end, um another another rumor that I've heard is that Jadavian Clowney defensive outside uh defensive end slash outside linebacker for the Houston Texans. Um they're him and the Houston Texans are in the contract bind right now. He obviously wants a new contract. He wants to get paid. And the Houston Texans don't seem like they want to pay him. And he has been rumored to be on the trade block. And What would you give up for him? See, that's the thing. Uh, see, that's the thing. That is, uh. The only thing we look at here is maybe we have an excess amount of wide receivers. You look at it, Alshon Jeffrey, mm-hmm. Nelson, you know, Arcega Whiteside like, now, who I think is going to play a major role this season. Even running back. We have eight running backs. Right yeah. Now. The corners, even. Our, our depth at cornerback, not that any of them are, like, But that's great, the thing. But. Like, the the projected starters, project, I say that in quotations, are Ronald Darby and Jalen Mills. But they're uh-huh. both I, injured. And I, 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 I know, I, I really dislike that. But if they were... If they were healthy, I think those were those would be good trade pieces. Um, and one of the wide receivers, I think, would be a trade piece as well. I think that I think we can live without Nelson Aguilar. I, I think, me personally, um, I just like him in the slot though. We don't do. really have what, what would be our next option in the slot. Really, we don't have that that shifty. All of our guys are kind of big and see that's the beauty, outside guys. See that's the beauty of running twenty two personnel, you know, twenty one personnel, two backs, one tight end, or you know, one tight end, two backs, vice versa. You can put a tight end in the slot. Like Zach Ertz. Like, that's the beauty of it. We would be able to create so many mismatches with the pieces that we have. It'd be almost like we wouldn't miss a piece. Like, think of this, think of this scenario, for example. Think of think of it. Everybody, you got three wide receivers out wide. You got Deshaun Jackson on one end, you got Alshon Jeffrey on another end, and then you have Zach Ertz in the slot, and then you have Dallas Goddard next to Lane Johnson or or uh Jason Peters. What do you think about trading Nelson or Alshon Jeffrey? Not well, uh, yet. I not need yet. to see. I, I just think one here is a couple things. One, he's injured all the time, in my opinion. I think he, he gets hurt every single every year. And but, I'm not saying season ending, but he does get banged up and he misses games. And on top of that, the age. And I think our Sega Whiteside, who's arguably, I know he hasn't played a game in an Eagles uniform yet, but and see, that's I, the kid. See, I saw this guy in, in college, man. This guy is athletic. Oh, we all, man. We all see the, seen the guy in college. I mean, I think 
I don't think all three of us, we watch a lot of college football. So obviously I, I've, football. I seen Stanford and I seen how that kid played. Yeah. The kid is a heck of a 50, 50 baller, but I need to see that game transition to the pros right. because we can Before say the you same want to do anything. Yeah. Right. Cause mm-hmm. we can say the same thing about Nelson Aguilar coming mm-hmm. out of um, USC. Right. I think you can just get something big time for this guy. And, and I know with, I don't want to get him, you know, up to the 32, 33 age range before you, you know, he drops off a little bit, but again, you're right. Like, listen, I guess Arcega Whiteside come out this year and have like a Nelson, Nelson Aguilar year where he just kind of you know lays an egg, right? But exactly. but like look at Aguilar he bounces back the next year or two after that, mm-hmm. and now he's come become a really good you know uh, solid you know number two maybe number three receiver on, on the offense. And you know and that wouldn't be a bad you know that's not a bad thing to have. But I I just need to see what the kid has and right. if the kid's game can transition to the pros. What do you guys make of the cornerback situation? I know we have so many guys at safety. Maddox back there. Jenkins will obviously get so much, a ton of playing time. Um, and the corner situation where we have Mills, who I'm not huge on, and, and Darby. Mm, I don't think that's Sidney Jones. Jones too. What do you guys think about Sidney Jones coming back off the Achilles? I know he's a year removed now from that. So I'm willing, a lot of question marks back there. But what do you guys think? I'm willing to give Sidney Jones another shot because i seen him out of Washington. i seen the kind of corner that he can be. So I'm willing to give him a shot. And he didn't do that bad um, down the stretch mm-hmm. um, in the playoffs and things like that. He he, he was not bad. Um, you know, he performed a little bit. I like Russell Douglas's game. I think he's a very underrated corner in our um, in our corner room. Um, 6'2", 210, has size. Um, I think he'll learn from <laughs> that, uh, that touchdown that he gave up from the Cowboys game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Jalen Mills here is the odd man out. A lot of people are saying this guy's going to start for us next year. No, I but think listen, he's I the just odd saw man out. This guy last season was awful. I mean, let's let's start he, out the he, beginning he, of the season. I'm going to be honest with you. He's been yeah. awful for the last couple of seasons. Yeah. He's been getting burnt. He get, first of all, last year, I mean, the thing that stands out for me was Adam Thielen in that Vikings game. Just every yeah, double I mean, move. The whole I mean, field. He's I've, just getting burnt the whole time. I've never seen a player so susceptible to the same move consistently uh-huh. in consistent yeah. years yeah. a day There's in my no life. There's no progress going on it. After each week, he would still do the same, mm-hmm. still Fall for the have the same, same mistakes. Thing. And then um, someone else I'm curious about is LeBlanc. I mean, he really shined during the playoffs. He did. Uh, when we needed these guys, these guys that we haven't really heard of before, they stepped up in the playoffs. Yes, they did. And so, Crevion um, LeBlanc with that huge interception to begin the game against right, the Saints. Right. I'm excited to see what they have for us. Uh, what do you guys think about Maddox? I like Maddox's game. Um, <laughs> it's going to be hard to try to find a spot because I think I think Maddox's game is good for the slot position, but also Crivion LeBlanc is there, and he really did perform, you know, towards the end of the season. So, man, that, yeah, that's going to be a heck of a competition, I think. I like Maddox a lot just because he played almost every position back there last year. He did. So he's a versatile. I know everything was said about him coming out right. of college was his size. But man, he he's he's one, he knows his role basically, right? Yep. He knows listen, Jenkins has got his spot back there. But he learns the positions through training camp, through practices, and, and he's he performed well at each one, really. I mean obviously everybody has their slip ups, but he played well last year for us. So I'm pretty high on Maddox this year. Um I just think from the cornerback position, I know Darby's coming off the ACL, but again, we signed him to a one year contract. So it was almost like I don't know if it's approve it and we'll give you, we'll extend you, or is it just like, listen, we don't really have many options as they, far as good talent. Do we just give him one year and let him walk? They say that coming off of that, they say he's going to be ready for week one, but I'm just like, listen, I, I've seen enough of Darby, and I'm willing to give these young guys a shot. I understand that we're trying to compete, so you're trying to keep that same Super Bowl team together, but let's be honest, that Super Bowl team wasn't perfect, all right? We were still getting burned on defense. Also, right. remember the fact, Tom Brady threw for over 500 yards against the Eagles, all right? Those corners was like burnt toast, all right? They sucked that yeah. game. Yeah, what do you guys think about we, one name we haven't mentioned yet, Ryan McLeod? What do you guys think about him and his role on the team this year? Um, I think it all depends on how he comes back. If he comes back, you know, looking like the same guy that we, the same safety that we, you know, grew to see and love, then I think obviously that's his spot to lose. But if he doesn't come out, you know, after that injury looking the same, then uh, we still got Maddox, you know, behind him. So, you know, it's... I just hope that that guy takes steps forward this year because we do have yeah. potential back there. We do. And it's and, and the last couple of seasons, we've always talked about how the secondary has always been kind of a weakness for us. Right. But now the fact that we have depth, I just hope, like, maybe just two. Just two, two out of the six or seven guys 
take a step forward and really become right. good players. Yep. So then we have we can we can say the names with confidence. You know, we can right. say, oh, Maddox. We have Maddox back there. Right. Kind of how it is with Jenkins. We say Jenkins, and he's, we got confidence in him. Like, oh, right. we got Jenkins there. You know what I mean? Right. The guys that are kind of like in the shadows are it seems like almost every year we're like oh let's see what they can do next year and then let's see what they can do next year but it's they're really just quite consistent back there and i want somebody to show us that they've improved and really Correct. just stand out yeah. right and somebody like max said to have confidence in like yeah. i i can't say definitely that i have confidence in these young corners mm-hmm. right and they're just really going in when someone else is injured right too so they're kind of just thrown in there real quick right and they're not really having that much field time yeah well, well yeah we were banged up back there yeah. last year that's, yes, we that's why like guys like leblanc got seems an like that's what happens every every season towards the end the guys are just thrown in there yeah one guy that i hope really takes a step forward this year because i know he has potential sydney jones you know like you mentioned earlier today yeah. the the potential out of washington he was great coming off the achilles tear which is one of the you know more gruesome injuries to have as yeah. far as a corner especially but i just hope that you know he takes a step forward this year and that our defense as a whole like listen we have, one thing we haven't mentioned yet is the linebacker position mm. i think we're pretty solid there were bradham yeah. in there especially nigel bradham i've always know, been a big fan of him you know and in, in the off season when the off season first started i was kind of worried about that linebacking position but now I, I have confidence you know us picking up zach brown and we still have nigel bradham and also another guy that you know can fill the other side fill the other linebacker position is uh paul worldlow Guy we picked up a couple years ago, but never got to play due to the fact that he tore his ACL in camp. So you know we're good at linebacker, but the thing about it is, I really you, and to be honest with you, in today's NFL, you really don't have to worry about a third linebacker because everybody pretty much plays three wide receivers, mm-hmm. three three wideouts. So you know you don't have to worry about that other linebacking position. So two linebackers, solid, cool. We're yeah, good. I'm with you. All right, let's take a look around the league now. We know how good the Eagles are and how much potential they have, but. You know, you look around the league, and, and one thing I want to mention real quick, the whole the whole situation with Tyreek Hill, he's back now from from the possible suspension that, that never was. Mm-hmm. Now, he's, Patty Mahomes has another weapon there. Yep. What are you guys like in the Chiefs? Do you like where they stand? Yeah. Damian Williams, a career backup running back, he's going to take the reins, as Andy Reid said previously earlier this week, that, you know, Damian Williams is the guy in that backfield. Do you, do you like where the Chiefs stand? Do you think they can compete? Because, listen— you, I, know, I know they can compete, but do you think they can compete with the Patriots teams like that for, for a Super Bowl and really take a step forward? Because listen, they lost Kareem Hunt, who right. I know he was he was a, I know he's a big piece to their, to their puzzle. To but be they, honest, oh, I, go ahead. I thought the Chiefs were cooked after I found out after they lost Kareem Hunt. Agree. And then I for sure thought they were going to lose Tyreek. Agree. And just all this hype around the homes, I thought they were just bound to wreck at some point. But now that Tyreek's coming back. And I've been watching clips of Mahomes recently and how he's mm-hmm. been even still improving his game. It's just, man, the Chiefs, they're going to get there. They're going to get there. Oh, yeah, they're going to go far in the AFC. I think that's the one team that can really rival the Patriots. I think, honestly, if Andy Reid can kind of get his coaching thing together, yeah. I think that's the one team the Chiefs, that can beat the Patriots dynasty right. within the AFC. What, what side do you think is going to be more competitive this year? Do you think the NFC or the AFC is going to be, like, with teams competing really going back and forth battling for you know spot in the nfc championship game or super bowl well let's think about this for a minute let's think in the nfc you have the eagles you have the saints um you have the rams you have the seahawks that's always competing Mm -hmm. so outside of those four teams in in chicago chicago is a a wild card rogers green bay coming and you still have and you still have green bay where in the afc you have the chiefs big time players all as always the patriots um, um, the San not San Diego, Los Angeles Chargers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know they're always an underrated team that's always there. I think yeah. on, honestly, in my opinion, I think the AFC is going to be uh, more competitive than the yeah. NFC. The, the Ravens maybe your team. The, what do you think about the Steelers? Do you think the Steelers still have anything? Ste- I think the Steelers is always a team that you got to watch in terms of really. Tanner yeah. shaking his head. Well, I don't. I don't know how. I don't know how they're gonna how they're gonna do with losing such a big piece in Antonio Brown and with a Roth, an aging Roethlisberger. I'm just I mean even last season they didn't start off too well. They didn't. But they they surprised us towards the end. They missed the playoffs. But well, the one guy I'm really high on this year and, and this kind of relates to fantasy in a way is uh Juju Smith-Schuster. I just yeah. think he's going to get a ton of targets, a ton of receptions. Well and, now and, with and, AB, and we know he's yeah. good. Well but now with AB not being on that squad, he's right. he's really going to get some targets now. But in terms of the Ravens, um you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if they sneak into a wild card spot. I think they're a team that you know you can't necessarily overlook. They're a team that you got to respect. They're a team that you kind of got to look out for. So, you know, and 
while we're at it, while we're talking about this subject, I got some Super Bowl odds, Super Bowl 54 odds right in front of me, if you guys don't mind me going into this. Yeah, go ahead. Um, according to OddsShark.com, of course, the Patriots uh, obviously have the best odds. Right behind them are the Chiefs, the Saints, the Rams. Somehow, in some way, the Chicago Bears are ahead of the Eagles. I don't know. That's a yeah. I don't. I don't Listen, know that about that. Listen, that Bears defense is probably the best in the league. Yeah, but we made Khalil Mack kind of look like another guy out yeah, there. Yeah, that was Jason Peters. Yeah. No, so, that was so Lane Johnson. <laughs> Lane Johnson too. Yeah, Lane Johnson definitely. Um, but you're right. Like our offensive line really stood tall in that, in that wild card game. And guess who comes after the Bears? The Cleveland Browns. Wow. Cleveland. Really, the Cleveland well, Browns. Know, are? Yeah. The Cleveland Browns. The Colts are ahead of us. The Chargers, and then then the Eagles. The Chargers are ahead of us. The Chargers are I, ahead of the that's Eagles. That's something I don't and understand because what have the Chargers done this offseason? Ooh, that's a good question. And hey, they here, have, here's and they I have think, turmoil with Here's where Gordon. I think this fact, the stuff that factors into the situation here. I just think big name players get big time attention. So for the Chargers, you might be thinking, listen, how? How's that possible, right? Listen, they got Melvin Ingram on that defensive line. They got dominant. They, they got, got Joey Keenan Bosa. Allen too. They got yeah. they got they receiver they receiving quarters oh, yeah. top notch. Joey man. Bosa on the other end, right? So right there, you got two dominant ends right there. I know Melvin Gordon can switch the linebacker a little bit here and there. You also got Darwin James, who's a freak. Yeah, that's and a, true. I'm, I'm telling you, this guy is a is a freak of nature, man. This guy is athletic. He can play any position back there. He's a stud. And that defense right there, look at look at those names. Hmm. What do the Eagles have those names on, on there? You know, it's like. I get Fletcher Cox. He's a name, right? You look at Fletcher, like, wow. Fletcher Cox, we know how dominant he is. You still have Malik Jackson. We do have Malik Jackson, but Malik Jackson, is he? can you relate him to the to the level of, the, of Derwin James, of a Joey Bosa? I don't know if you can. Mm. I mean, he's like a – Malik Jackson, in my opinion, is a B plus. See, Joey my, Bosa is an A. You know, Melvin Ingram's an A. These guys are A's. See, my part, see my thing about it is, man, with young players, I got to see how they are. Mm-hmm. I can't – they can't – for me – they can't come into the NFL in my in my book and just be dominant players. Like I gotta be able to see you on the field first because it's different playing from college to the pros. It's a huge difference. In college, you're playing up against boys. NFL, you're playing up against grown men. One thing I think has to factor into this this odds over here is the question mark surrounding Wentz and his health. Because like, is he gonna be the twenty seventeen Wentz? And if he is, I'm sure we jump up that board. I but think with the question marks still yeah. surrounding them, you know. I think he will um, have some version of that 2017 form. Will he have the full 2017 version? It remains Probably to be not. seen. But I think we will see hints of that 2017 form because now he has an off season where he doesn't have to come back from an injury. He doesn't have to focus on rehabbing from an injury. He can focus squarely on football. And as we reported a couple of shows ago, it was reported that before training camp even began, that Wentz was, you know, Forming a bond with his receivers, I think, mm-hmm. down in Houston, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And then, on the top of that, I'm hearing Nelson Aguilar is training with one of the greatest of all times to do it, Randy Moss. So, I'm excited for this season. I'm right. excited for the Eagles. And since we're on the topic of wide receivers now, you mentioned Nelson. And um, the Saints, Thomas, is a no-show at camp. Mm. And with Melvin Gordon going through his contract thing, do you think NFL is kind of taking a page out of the NBA's book and – players are really standing up for how much money they're worth and what do you think going forward how do you think this is going to affect the NFL I think I think yeah I think I agree with you 100% I think it's a great point you just brought up um yeah I do actually I think the, a lot of the NBA free agency I mean you saw how many atten- how much attention it got right people tweeting out people posting about it you know how crazy it's been all these guys moving but at the end of the day I mean listen the names you're mentioning here Zeke I mean how many top seasons has he had as the top roster in this league yep you look at Melvin Gordon I mean these both of those running backs are top five in the league, and look at Michael Thomas, Mister Consistent. I mean, right. this guy just puts up stats yeah. and numbers. Definitely yep. deserves the money. That he, he deserves it. You can't blame these guys for not showing no, up. No, no, you can't blame them. And then, like, and then as I said before, you're playing in a contact sport where one good hit and your career is over. Uh-huh. So, of course, I'm going to want my money. I'm I, putting my body on the line every Sunday, every yeah, Monday, definitely. every Thursday, Saturday sometimes. From Thomas's perspective, and here's why I think it's different with him. He, first of all, he plays a different position, right? The running back years on on the legs of those guys, you know, they're short. Wide receiver, Michael said, Thomas, uh, yeah, the, okay. from the running back position. I okay. mean, you know, the years on, on the tread on their tires and all. Okay. But from a wide receiver position, first of all, Michael Thomas is how old now? 23, 24? I mean, this guy's up and coming, and he's already probably top five, yep. six, maybe a fringe six in this league. But you got to pay that, man. This, this guy's a superstar talent. But here's the scary part when it comes to the Saints and their receivers. 
They are relying on Drew Brees, and Drew Brees can make any receiver look good. Because let's be honest, after Michael Thomas, what other receivers do we know what they have outside of Ted Ginn? Uh, nobody. Maybe. I mean, if you want to throw in their tight end now to get Jared Cook, and, and yeah. Alvin Kamara catches a lot of passes out of the backfield. Right, yeah. But, yeah, you're right. I agree that they don't really have anybody else. And, again, let's go back to relating this to fantasy. Another guy who's going to get a lot of targets. There's no competition there with him. Mm-hmm. So, if you're looking at you're looking at the back end of the first round, early second, you know, guys like Julio, again, we can, another name we haven't mentioned. Yep. He's also in kind of a contract dispute, too. He wants some. He wants more money. Now, again, different situation there, right? He's 30 years old. Right. Do you want to pay him that mega, mega contract? I get what he's done, but you're paying him for what he's going to do. Not what he's done in the past. And all that's being true, but then you have to also look at who he's catching balls from, who he's making look good. I don't think, and I actually know a Falcons fan, um, I don't think, well, first off, this Falcons fan in particular, he doesn't think that highly of Matt Ryan, and neither do I. Really? Why is that? Because I'm kind of high on Matt Ryan. There's times where Matt Ryan looks like one of the elite quarterbacks in the NFL. And then there's times where Matt Ryan will throw a pass. And I'm like, what the heck were you looking at? Are you talking about Matt Ryan from a fantasy standpoint or a football standpoint? I'm talking, this is strictly from a, um, a, football, a football standpoint. standpoint. Now, okay. in terms of fantasy, I think you can grab him. I think he's top five quarterback in fantasy yeah. definitely this year. You I mean, this guy him. throws it, lots of weapons surrounding him. He would be a nice pick in terms of fantasy value. Mm-hmm. Yes. But in terms of NFL NFL value, eh, I don't value him that high. He does make some poor decisions with the football, but I mean he's got a ton of ton of weapons around him. Calvin Ridley, Devontae Freeman's back and healthy. I think the Falcons, they're they're I think they're going to be a surprise team. They are this year. I think a lot of people aren't talking to them. I know right. that a lot of people are saying the Saints are going to win that division, which again it's hard to argue that they probably are. But again, we're talking about how great the NBA season is going to be. Mm-hmm. This NFL season coming up, we got a healthy Cam Newton now in that division. Yep. Uh, Jameis Winston is going to get one more shot with yeah. Bruce Arians, yeah. so it, it's Man. it's going to be it's going to be fun this year. I mean, yeah. lots of uh, lots of news surrounding Mr. that division as a whole. Really, I know Tampa Bay. I mm. think Mr. Crab Legs is going to continue to eat L's instead of W's. I'm just saying. Uh, you think, yeah. yeah, and and what do the Buccaneers do when um, they're just playing a tough get division? A, dude. They get another they get another season of Jameis Winston just doing what he did last season. And now, who who do they throw in? Because they had Fitz last season. Well, the, that's the that's the problem. They don't have anybody else, and <laughs> and they're really relying on Winston to take they're, the next they're ba- step. They're banking on Winston, and then next season, if he does the same, do you trade him? You cut bait. Yeah, you just got to cut bait. Yeah, with him. you got. To. I mean, this guy is the number one overall pick. That's why he's getting so many chances. Right. That's, that's the only reason why. Right. I mean, especially not just talking about his talent, which has been kind of questionable. His decision making throws a ton of picks, but and also was on the off the field stuff yep. too. I mean. You throw all that together with a guy who's drafted fourth, fifth round. He's like he's out of the league by this point. Yep. But right. because, and factor in the fact that he's a quarterback one. So yep. there's not a lot of that either. Not a lot of stud quarterbacks out there. So that division to me, you know, that the Saints and the the Falcons, the Panthers, and the Bucks. It's gonna be a fun division to watch this year. And I think on top of all that, with Cam coming back, we haven't mentioned a lot. Yes. Can he become that that Super Bowl type Cam Newton that we saw a couple years ago? And you know what? I'm I'm sick of the rhetoric with Cam that he doesn't know how to read defenses. I'm, I'm sick of that. After the show, I'm going to show you guys this clip where he describes mm-hmm. what he a quarter, the play. what a quarterback goes through within those 15 to 20 seconds that's left on the clock after the play clock. you come out yeah. the huddle. Like this, like Cam Newton is actually a very very intelligent quarterback. Right. So. For people to say and people keep poo pooing and tossing Cam Newton off to the side, it's ridiculous. I'm tired of hearing it. He's he's got to be a top ten quarterback in this league, right? You would think. I I think so. I think you can arguably say, yeah, you can fight with me about that. I think he's a top ten quarterback. One healthy, I should say. Yeah, when healthy. when healthy, you can fight with me about that. But I'm tired of hearing the rhetoric that he's not an intelligent quarterback. I don't want to hear that no more. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Hard to but argue. Before we um before we move on, let's let's take this football discussion a little closer to home in terms of the NFC East and how we think that's going to shape out. Well, Um, I think the Redskins are awful, and I think the Giants suck. So I think it's a two-horse race. (laughs) It seems like it's it's usually going to go between the Cowboys and the Eagles. But the Redskins did surprise last season. For a second, I thought they were going to win the division. (laughs) You know, if if Al Smith doesn't go down. Sanchez? Right. I mean, yeah. And Sanchez did retire this season now Mm -hmm. that you mentioned him. Yeah. the infamous butt fumble will be forever remembered. Yeah. It's about damn time. <laughs> I'm 
just remember he I came mean, in the, to back up uh, Colt McCoy last year in that Redskins yeah. game. That uh, was yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. It. I mean, hey, uh, Mark Sanchez is the one of two quarterbacks to bring down both Peyton and Brady in the playoffs. That's true. You know the other quarterback? Who else? Joe Flacco. Mm. Mm. Funny. Too that's a lot. Of, now listen, that's a stat you bring up there because a lot of people are hating on Joe Flacco. A that's, lot of people just say he right. sucks. That's a good job but out of you. That is. That's some got, good points there. I gotta give you one of these, man. I got. I gotta give you one of these. There you thank go. you. Thank you. But really, you should be clapping Mark Sanchez. <laughs> Listen, I think do you, do you guys think Dwayne Haskins starts this season as the starting quarterback? Because they do have a little. I mean, look, they signed Landon Collins to have Ryan Kerrigan, but you're telling me they might get rid of Trent Williams. So yeah, that's the that's the rumor that I'm hearing. Um, they're in a contract dispute. Um, they feel like Trent Williams. They know they're, he's not worth the contract, and they're talking about releasing him before the start of the season. You're releasing one of the best life tackles in football, just like that. That's how you know you have a dysfunctional um, a dysfunctional <laughs> program. I mean, and then on top of that, then they got rid of Mason Foster because they believe that this young linebacker that they drafted last year. I mean, come on now. What is the matter with Washington at this point? I don't know. Listen, they, they got laughing. some names. No, they Giants got some names. Stuff. Ryan Kerrigan, he's another name who's, who's been pretty solid for them. Yes. So they got some guys there. But I want to talk about some Giants. I think the fact that they already, oh, they already said Eli is going to start the season. He's going to start. Daniel Jones, listen, this guy was sixth overall pick. And the fact that the coach went out of his way and said, listen, there's no competition. There's no even competition in training camp. Eli's our guy. Yeah. How do you how do you say that? That means Well, that I mean, you got someone called Daniel Jones. What? You drafted Daniel Jones. And um this, they I said think, they were high on him. Which is yeah, obviously why they drafted him that yeah. high. The thing is that you definitely have to keep Eli in for a little bit and have Daniel Jones kind of follow behind him, and I mean it's it is Eli Manning. This guy has two rings. I think it's a horrible idea. I think, <laughs> yeah, it's, I think hey, it's horrible. I, I don't like Eli Manning either. I don't if, think if I'm a none Giants of us like fan, Eli at this point. If you're a Giants fan, right? At this say, point, I say I'm sitting here and I'm a Giants fan, and I'm like, oh, Eli's going to start the season. Let me move over if you're uh, a Giants. Fan. How, <laughs> how many? How this is an example. This is only an example. How how many games does this Eli get before it's like, listen, to give Daniel Jones a shot. I mean, how much worse can it get? Because we saw Eli every game last year. He can't throw anymore. Half the season when they find out they have no wins, they'll throw Daniel Jones in there. Yeah, but then you're throwing but then you're throwing a young kid into a problematic situation. I like think the Giants are going to be the worst can't team put in football this year. Giants. Like, you're setting the kid up for failure doing that. Hey, I think that's I mean, cruel and unusual punishment. We can say all this and all, all we want, but until Daniel Jones actually steps on that field and shows us what we got, we have no idea if, if this kid's going to be yeah, uh, I'm looking terrible. At, I'm looking at his career uh, throwing percentage at 58%. That's, that's not – man, that's think, horrible. Do you think – where do you put the Giants as far as worst teams in the league this year? Do you Ooh. put them down right, right there at one of the worst – yeah, oh, the worst. I won't say the worst, but you can put them as one of the worst. I I could go as far as to say they're going to be the worst team. I, I said that a couple a couple minutes ago, but then you then you got to think around the whole league. Like Over Denver's going to be bad. Bengals. Bengals are going to be bad this year. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the Lions. Mm, I don't think the Lions are going to be that bad. I think the Lions are are going to be pretty. Vegas bad. actually has the worst Super Bowl odds. Vegas actually has the Miami Dolphins as the worst Ooh, the, team. The Cardinals, the Cardinals are going to be really bad too. That not yes, uh, yes. Kyler Murray could shock some oh, people. Kyler Murray. Yeah, but is Kyler One Murray guy. an old Larry Fitzgerald and who else? D- David Johnson. <laughs> they got that Hakeem Butler. This guy's been compared to LeBron on the football field. Hakeem Butler from from Iowa State, and they also have Christian Kirk, who's. You know, I'm, I'm hearing good things from Christian. I'm curious Christian to Kirk. see how the Jets are going to do with the highest paid running back. I believe the one of. What do you guys think about Robbie Anderson in that offense? Do you like him this year? I uh, I I hope he matures more than he has been. I think he can be a pretty good right receiver I think the Jets if he could focuses. Be okay. I think the Jets could be decent this year. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, don't yeah. I think the Jets I think going to be like one of those middle tier teams. Yeah. You know, they might finish maybe 7 and 9, maybe 8 and 8, maybe even 6 and 10. They might beat the Patriots once. Yeah, they will. I think they will. Cuz it's always they always for some reason the Jets and the Miami Dolphins, they always beat the Patriots at least one yeah. time yeah. during the season. You know how I like out of the out of that remember that a couple of years ago that whole Rose and Josh Allen draft? I like I like Josh Allen. I think he's a good quarterback. I know he plays for Buffalo, so a lot of people are low on him, but I think he's got he first of all he runs a lot and he and he's got good size. I think if he had weapons around him not that he has any this year. I mean, John Brown, you can't really call him a good weapon to have in that offense. But Cole Beasley as well, like you can't really call those guys good. He needs, mm-hmm. yeah. But 
He needs I think to he's focus got on his arm power. Just, just I agree. Focus on his talent. And, and, and listen, he's got some talent. I mean, they draft him that high for a reason. I and agree. Buffalo's kind of been that, that laughing stock. But I don't know. I think I this don't year, think so. I think this year they're going to be not the worst team in the league. No, I mean, no. which is kind of where they've been the last couple of years. But but back back to the um, back to the NFC East. Let's let's talk about these retarded Cowboys now. Of course, they're always going to be a pain in the rear end because they are every single year. We either lose two times to them or we somehow, some way split with them. It's very rare that we beat them twice in one season. They did. Now, they beat us twice in one season last year. Yep. Now, the one thing that they have to fight with is the fact that they um, have to pay a lot of players come this offseason. And season. referees. <laughs> Yo, I, I, the one thing we need to do is find a way to stop his... on your back. <laughs> we need to find a way to stop Ezekiel Elliott. Because every time we play against him, he just runs for like a thousand yards against us. Yeah, that's if he decides to play. And he's, obviously, I don't think he's going to play with the current contract that he's under now. Well, well, I think he should play because, you know, first of all, he's under contract for like right. two more years. So What's he better, he, what is he better he get there. looking for suspension-wise? What's he, what are we looking at for him? Suspension-wise? Yeah. Wait, what happened is he, that he's getting he suspended getting, again? Is he getting suspended? Well, that I whole thing when he was at the uh, the concert. Yeah, yeah the concert incident. I don't think he's getting suspended for that. I know he was talking to Roger. Roger Goodell about it. Yeah, I don't think I he's don't, getting suspended for that. I don't think that. he's getting suspended for it either. But at the same time, if he doesn't show up, which I'm, I'd be surprised. Now, Melvin Gordon is a different situation. I think Melvin Gordon already said he's not showing up. Yeah. But Zeke hasn't reported yet. And I think, is today the first day for them? Or yep. was yesterday? I, I believe so. I think today might be the first day for them. So we're going to find out in a couple hours if he if he shows up to the facility or not. So I, honestly, I'd kind of be surprised if he didn't. I, I think he will be there. Mm-hmm. Just because I think him and Dak are close. And Dak, I know Dak's talking to him and saying, hey, listen, we got to focus on the season. And. I know Zeke probably is the most mature guy out well, there, but I think it, Dak can talk to him. And- well, see, it's easy for Dak to say that because Dak knows he's going to get paid. He knows he's sure. going to get money. Yeah. Either from the Cowboys or some other team. Most likely it's going to be the Cowboys. But, you know, quarterback's going to get paid. It's the running back position that don't know from year to year whether or not they're going to get paid or not. Do you like how the Cowboys stack up as a whole this year? Do you like, I mean, I, you know, they have Dak, who I think is a good quarterback. For the most part, I mean, he has his moments where you, he looks like he's, I mean, how is this guy on the field because some of his decision making? But at the same time, look, he runs. He, he's mm-hmm. he's gone to the playoff. He, or he went last year, and you know, I just think like he doesn't really have a high ceiling. Is my only thing about him. Like, can he get to that Super Bowl? Can he take that team? I don't. I just don't think he can. That, that remains to be seen. But I think for the Cowboys, I think this is the last year for them to go to the Super Bowl with their current uh, core intact. Listen, they have the stud running back. They have a good quarterback under center. Amari Cooper, the same way. Amari Cooper is, you could argue, a wide receiver number one. I mean, I get it. He's inconsistent with all kind of, I know, I mean, the Oakland Raiders are awful. So, that's last understand. year, yeah. That, <laughs> last that, year, that, that's an understatement. Last year, he was inconsistent with his performances. But when he, he really took off. Green right slot, spider two wide banana. Yeah, all right, John, up, John. All right, John, enough of that. Shut up. Um, but listen. Amari Cooper last year, inconsistent with the Raiders, comes at the trade deadline, and, and it performs really well with the Cowboys. So I think Demarcus Lawrence still there, Byron Jones still there. They they got a good team. See, that's it, the, it's going to be but gonna See, be that's fun the thing. That, like I said, that core really only has this year and this year only because otherwise you got to pay a bunch of players. Demarcus Lawrence is locked in, and I think they made him the highest-paid player in franchise history. He's already locked in. But now you Jaylen have to. Jalen Smith, Van Der Esch, You mean, have God, to pay. You have to good. pay Jalen Smith. You have to pay Amari Cooper. You can, then you got to figure out how you are gonna pay Ezekiel Elliott, and Dak. Dak Prescott, Zach Martin, and Travis Frederick, and all of these they players demand yeah. big money. Good luck. I'm glad it ain't our issue. One thing I'll say about Dallas: they do draft really well. They drafted Van Der, Esch, Van Der Esch. and people were saying, "Man, who the hell's Van Der Esch? That's the funny part. And he, and he came the in. The thing and, is, the Eagles could have drafted Van Der Esch, and we were, but it was kind of a, a spite thing to draft a guy Dallas Goddard, who Dallas wanted. But I think I think Dallas is going to I think Dallas is going to be um, one of the key factors With, this year. Witten's back. Offense. People are forgetting Witten's back this year. Yeah. Oh, I'm okay. just saying he, he couldn't do anything in the booth, so he had to what? come back on the field. I agree, but but listen, they took a shot on Jalen Smith. They drafted Byron Jones high, and he was he turned out to be you know great for him. Zeke, they dra- I mean the guys they draft, and especially look at that O line. I mean the guys one through five across that O line. I mean you look at that, they they draft really really they really do. well. One thing they we do. do is we don't draft that well. 
you know, we we'll pick and choose when we want to draft. Some well. years it's like hit or miss. I mean, it all depends. If we can draft better, I mean, it'd be a lot easier to win games. Obviously, agree. All right, so we're on the football topic. So let's start with wide receiver duo. What who who has the best wide receiver duo in football? Because we so far we been watching basketball and the signings and everyone becoming a duo mm -hmm. but now we're on football so who had which team in the nfl has the best wide receiver duo Ooh, that's a good one well, obviously good you, last you year i would have said a b and juju but now they're they're not together anymore so you gotta say the it, it's gotta be the browns or the vikings to me yeah you got I, stefan I, diggs you got adam and then you got um you, for the browns you got obj and jarvis i think you gotta go Thielen and diggs I think, you know, I think I'd go Vikings. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll go Vikings because I've actually seen that product together on the field. Right. Um, I mean, you've still seen the to be you've seen. seen the Brown. I mean, you've seen OBJ and Jarvis play together at one point in college. Yeah, you did. You did. I, just, but, I saw Jarvis yeah. last year, and one another thing that factors in is the 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 fact factors in is the weapons. The weapons that the Browns have are going to be a problem for the NFC or the AFC, I should say. Based on based on the fact that listen, OBJ Jarvis and they're gonna get Kareem Hunt back. They got Nick Chubb Baker. So the fact that I know Dalvin Cook is good for the Vikings. And I'm I'm relating these two teams together now. Right. But listen, Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen are gonna get theirs right. Dalvin Cook could go down and get hurt any day of the week. You know yep. what I mean? He's he's shown that the last couple of seasons. So I just think the fact that they're gonna get more looks, Diggs and Thielen are gonna get more looks. I think that's why they're probably the best combination of wide receivers in the league. Yeah, that's a, no other team really comes to mind when I. Hear. No, not really, not really. Um, yeah, that's that's a heck of a good question. Yeah, I can't think of anybody outside of the Browns. Or it the Vikings. could be Patriots because literally any two wide receivers yeah, they have no, always become. I can't put the Patriots <laughs> in there because that's Brady. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yo, what's the whole Josh Gordon thing? Is he coming back anymore? Or is he? I like, don't know. Not playing. Football? I mean, in his Instagram bio, it's a Super Bowl champion. So. Yeah, Who knows? I, I don't know. <laughs> and it's a shame because Josh Gordon, obviously, he's a talented wide receiver. And he just can't if, get it together. If he would have stayed focused on the game, and I think if he didn't, if he wasn't so he so influenced by outside sources, mm -hmm. I think you can arguably say that he would have been the best wide receiver that's today. Fair. Like right. that's how much potential he. Let's had. let's just hit the fills real quick with this last ten minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me. 54 and 48 overall record. They're half game back to the wild card, and they've kind of been there for the last couple of weeks. Um, have, do you think this team's done enough to have the front office go out and get an arm? I mean, they're right there. They're not in the wild card spot right now. They're half game back with the Cardinals for that second spot. But do you do you want them to make a big move? Have they done enough to, to really put them over the edge and get that wild card spot? I've already said that I'm done anyway. I'm already focused on football, so it don't matter to me. <laughs> Listen, you and a, and a lot of people feel the same way with the inconsistent team. I'm, I'm sick of the inconsistency at this point. What do you think? Um, the Phillies, as far as what are they on a win streak now? We'll, we'll, five out of we'll last call, six. We'll call it a win streak. Yeah, uh, five out of six. What's that yeah. infamous wow that you like to do, Tanner? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, if they figure out what they're doing with pitching, I know um, the GM went out there to see how Boyd was doing on the mound, right? Yeah. Um, personally, he wanted to see how he was doing. I saw a rumor out there for Trevor Bauer, maybe. Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many rumors, and there's so many things that the Phillies could do, mm -hmm. but will they do it? What, what do you think about Drew Smiley's start? He had a great start his first, you know, we picked him up, and he pitched really well. Pavetta gets moved to the bullpen. Do you like the move with Pavetta getting moved? I know he, he, he pitched two and two-thirds scoreless innings. He's been great since he got moved there a couple, I mean, I'd say about a week right. ago, a couple so days ago. Smiley, he pitched six innings, uh, let up four hits, one earned run, eight strikeouts. Mm -hmm. Um... I mean, hey, this usually this is normal for us because we see a guy come in on the mound, pitch really great the first game, comes and back the in, and then we're like, he, okay, send him away. And then yeah. he looks like hot crap. Yeah. The next next go up. So, a huge series against the Braves coming up this weekend. I mean, it, it, listen, this I know we're probably not chasing for the division title anymore because we're six games out. But listen, the Nats are, are only a game ahead of us. Yeah, I've seen that. We we can probably if we make first of all make a move and and stay you know playing. Great. I shouldn't say great. We're not playing great because our offense has kind of been inconsistent. But if we keep winning, that's all that matters at the end of the day. I don't care how we do it. If we keep winning, um, this team this team could be a playoff team. And, and we got a week away. We're going to be sitting here next week. Trade deadline is going to be done by, you know, I guess 24 hours at that point it would be over. Yeah. And we're going to be sitting here hopefully with some uh, some better players on our team. And, and I hope, the pitchers especially. Yeah, I hope so because, shoot, I mean, 
Yeah, they're one game behind the Nationals. So I guess you can say that the Phillies do have a fighting chance. It's just we've been arguing about this. It's a long summer, man. I get it. We're in, we're getting to the dog days of summer now. So I get the frustration that throughout the whole season. I get the fact that football's coming around. And every Philly fan is usually like this. Training camp starts up. Preseason starts up. We get yep. into the football talk. Yep. But but you can't you can't quit on the Phillies right now, 54 and 48. Mm. You can't quit on them yet. Because you know when they get to the playoffs, you don't want to go hopping on the bandwagon. Right. You, you can't do that. Giving them up in July, then you think it's be October. We're in a playoff game. You can't be coming back. <sighs> Saying just, just I'm sorry. Put I'm sorry. your Phillies you hat know? back on. Yeah. <laughs> T over there. Brush the dust off. <laughs> Takes the Eagles shirt off. Puts the I'm not Philly taking the no Eagles shirt. Back shirt. On. Oh, you know what? That's, that's hard to do. You all know that. You got you to gotta stick with it. <laughs> now, we, go, yeah, ahead, go ahead. Man. While we have a little bit, I, we mm. should jump to the Sixers. Maybe talk about that. We have one roster spot left. Okay. Uh, on the board, there's still Jamal Crawford, Vince Carter. Uh, Sean Kilpatrick, Sean Livingston, Carmelo. Oh, man, what is this, like 2008 or something? Stevenson, <laughs> Jeremy Lin, Trey Burke, Kenneth, uh, and then, like, Farid. Kenneth Farid. Farid, yeah. A bunch and, of low lives. Yeah, so what do you guys think the Sixers do? I think we just scoop up Melo, just go ahead, have him go out got, there and fall we, out. We uh, just signed uh, Corkmaz back for another two yeah, years. Yeah, now. worst contract. I don't know what Elton Brand did. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but there's not really anyone left out there. It pisses me off. Just get, snag J.R. Swish, bro. J.R. Swish can can hit those threes, and he can be like the Kyle Corver that we wanted, but then he it's just ridiculous. stabbed right. us in the back and went to Milwaukee. Right. Well, yeah, but do we remember what he did in the finals? <laughs> Listen, Kyle Corver, all I would need him to do is shoot threes and make them. Yeah. Make half of them. That's all I need. I wish we could have had Corver. But listen, I get the same time he's a defensive liability. He's almost like a JJ Redick, only older. Yeah, but he's coming off the bench, so we, it really wouldn't have mattered that much. You're right. Yeah, yeah I mean, saying. Corver and LeBron are the only two left from their draft. Really? That's, yeah, that's yeah. incredible. D-Wade retired, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Only two that's that is left. Incredible. 2003 draft. Only two active. Was Corver a first-round pick? Because um, I'm not sure. I, I forget. I, was I don't remember. First rounder or second rounder. I know he was basically traded for, you saw that, like the fax machine or whatever he was yeah. traded for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> but, yeah, if we can it's get, like, ridiculous. a J.R. Smith or somebody like that. It, it, at this point, we kind of have our core intact. Right. One one bench guy's not right. going to make a and total also, difference. I want to touch on how players have been dropping out of the the uh, Team USA. And like, more like the Sixers players, how um, Tobias dropped out of the Team USA. And I, I feel, although, like, I, I don't necessarily like players dropping out, like, to play for our country. But yeah. um, I like how they're dropping out to focus more on their game for the Sixers. And I agree with that. And just like Simmons dropping out, playing for Australia. Um, Tanner, by the way, since you're on the, the Sixers and Ben Simmons, if you if you send me another video clip with Ben Simmons hitting jump shots, I kid you not, I'm going <laughs> to hey, flip the list. He's improving. Right? Tobias is really working with him, yeah, and I feel confident that they're, me off. they're yeah. working, building his jump shot, and also building chemistry. Too. When I see it in the he's NBA. Working out, he's working out with Devin Booker, too. Yeah. When I see it in the NBA. That's when I congratulate him. And you will. Until then, you will. Leave me alone about it. That's all I'm saying. All right? He's here. Yeah, it's. it's you piece of Swiss cheese. Thank you, Chris. I just, you are. I just like how they're taking the time to, to really focus on their upcoming season for Agreed. the Sixers. I agree with you 100%. All right. If y'all missed any of today's show, you can go to philly experience.simplecast.com. We are on all major platforms. We're talking Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Tune in. And we also upload YouTube. on YouTube as well. So listen, if you missed any of today's episode, there's no excuse. And hey, y'all, listen, we also have a Twitter account as well that you, you can interact with us with at the Philly EXP1 on Twitter. Listen, rate, subscribe to us, rate us five stars, talk to us. You guys want us to talk about something? We irritate you about something? Just let us know. Hit us up. We appreciate your support. All right? Tune in next week. We're talking about practice. It's Nicholas. Go.